Hi guys, my name is Aditya and I am the CEO of Automaski. Today I am going to be talking about beyond quantum computing and the next thousand years of human technology. The uh, purpose behind today's presentation is to explain what comes after quantum computers and where do we go from here. Now, we will be covering a lot of ways to compute. Computation is the foundation of almost all sciences and technologies across domains from drug discovery uh, to logistics to finance to robotics to AI. And so it is fundamental to human progress. Automaski is a millennium firm. Uh, we have more than a hundred millennium uh, achievements to our credit and inventions and I'll be covering a few of those but mostly about uh, the future. Now uh, I normally talk very fast but uh, today I'm, I'm going to be talking pretty slowly so that it is easy to understand. It's a very complicated topic. Uh, each of these technologies deserves, you know, hundreds of thousands of PhDs, you know, to focus on it. And we are going to be covering quite a bit. Now, so, so far, uh, we've been working on complexity theory. Uh, we implies Automaski and me, the founder of Automaski. Now, we've been working on complexity theory since 1986, 7, 8, etc. Now, we solved P is equal to NP in the early 90s, which is 1991, 92, 93. We got into quantum physics in mid 90s and within a few years realized this universe is a simulation and that too a linear order simulation. And that implementing physics won't require 2 to the power 3n complexity, but rather it is a linear complexity that needs to be implemented of the order of n, where n is the number of particles. Now, we had developed our rudimentary quantum computer based on our you know, newly founded uh, understanding and theories of the universe and how the universe functions. And we were perhaps, you know, I mean, uh, perhaps is the wrong word. We were the first to build the most powerful quantum computers in the world. But only in 2014, when there were massive publications and we reviewed some of those and we figured out which gates to implement, how to build circuits, you know, and solve uh, you know, problems, which algorithms to use, how to benchmark and test our quantum computer. So we could say that, you know, uh, we had the most perfect quantum computer already, but uh, by doing these benchmarking and testing, etc., we implicitly achieved quantum supremacy in early uh, 2015. Now, two years back, we simulated quantum gravity with a billion qubits. Quantum gravity is the ultimate ultimate quest in quantum physics and for uh, physicists all over the world. And it was pretty exciting. A couple of months back, we publicly launched our RSA2048 cracking service available for anyone who cares to pay money and use it. Till then, it was available only to department uh, departments of defense and agencies around the world behind closed doors. Now, this is a very controversial topic. A lot of people believe that, you know, RSA and cryptography in general cannot be cracked. Automatsky is perhaps in a different world or in a different league. And, uh, you know, you talk about uh, quantum computers and the only thing people seem to, you know, be worried about is, can you crack RSA 2048? So the answer is yes. We've always said that since 1990s. Now, uh, today we are working on our quantum gravity computer based on causalite formalism. formalism. Uh, 
again the quantum gravity computer has been ready for years now we just don't understand it well enough we don't understand the theory behind uh, the quantum gravity computer how to use it to solve real world problems uh, which is one of the things we'll we'll discuss uh, today in this presentation and we've been making incremental changes to you know our quantum computers and and all our you know efforts continuously now if this presentation goes against your belief system then please ignore this presentation stop the video and focus on things you are passionate about if you are respectful and polite i would love to answer any questions you might have at any point in time and would love to listen to your thoughts you can email info at automatsky.com now now that automatsky you know all for for a couple of decades now now that automatsky has the most powerful quantum computers in the world where do we go from here what is the road ahead for mankind so there are quite a few things like i said computing is fundamental to you know all sciences and technologies that mankind is interested in there are a couple of these you know ways to compute uh, you know and solve problems now the first is hidden variable theory uh, it is a wrong theory but uh you know we've been there done that many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is again we believe it's nonsense non collapsive quantum uh, collapsing quantum measurements we have achieved that time travel uh, computer is basically nonsense quantum field theory uh, offers no benefit over quantum computers pretty much non deterministic turing machines have been achieved analog computing quantum gravity computer non linear quantum mechanics uh, dna rna computing uh, adiabatic quantum computation and reversible computing uh, most of these have been achieved and uh, dna and adiabatic have been abandoned because they offer no benefits oracle machines are uh, quite exotic hyper computing quant quantum time crystals probabilistic computing and there are lot of other approaches also so we are going to go through them one by one and i am going to explain where uh, automaski is what we have achieved and uh, i mean uh, and then we can create a picture of uh, the future of mankind and where we are going and uh, probably how how do we get there now i mentioned a lot of things and i have put a lot of dates i said we achieved this on so and so year etc it's very difficult to put a date honestly because uh, unlike unlike a project with a definite start and finish these are continuous efforts we keep changing our you know computers and solvers every day continuously tweaking them making changes experimenting seeing if something else is better something else can make it faster more efficient more accurate and so on so forth uh but i mean with this kind of an ambiguity it becomes very difficult to put a date on it but uh, normally uh, we put the date which corresponds to the first time when we achieved uh, when we solved a problem when we you know a real world problem and uh, we could prove to ourselves that something worked and so that would be a logical you know uh, date to put uh, other than that everything is approximate uh, you know like i said it's a continuous effort and uh, you know even in our minds we're not very clear when we look back you know whether it was 92 december 93 march uh you know we are in the business of invention not in record keeping now <coughs> hidden variable theory in quantum physics you know uh, some people try to explain quantum physics by assuming there are some hidden variables inside the quantum system that drives the quantum system 
So when they cannot explain a quantum system, they, they assume there are hidden variables which if present are driving it and everything is everything can be rationally explained. Uh, you know, these are also attempts to, you know, uh, explain the ambiguity or non-determinism in quantum systems by saying that uh, there are hidden variables and everything is a direct consequence of that and hence is deterministic. Now, uh, the physical universe, you know, the one in which we live in is non-deterministic, but a quantum physics process or, or an evolution or a calculation is extremely deterministic. And this might be counterintuitive, but if you look at a quantum computer and there is a circuit in front of you, when that circuit executes from left to right, it is deterministic. Okay. And uh, which means if you run a circuit, you get the same answer inside the uh, the solution the answer is the same you measure it a couple of times and you might get a little bit of variance in the measurements by virtue of you know the uncertainty in measurements but other than that the quantum computer is pretty deterministic so while in this universe the quantum physics is deterministic according to Artemisky, the way we have explained it right now in front of you but the universe is non-deterministic because there are uh, a lot more things involved in, in the execution of the universe. Now, this hidden variable theory from Automaski's perspective and uh, since we have gone the furthermost in unraveling the mysteries of, of the universe and the way it functions under the hoods, uh, we can uh, probably uh, very arrogantly you know, claim that Nobody understands the universe more than Automaski. Now, based on that experience and the knowledge we have gained, we can say the hidden variable theory is absolutely bullshit. Uh, there are no hidden variables. Uh, you know, uh, just that, uh, you know, we don't, uh, outside Automaski, people don't understand quantum physics well enough and the way it is implemented in the universe. There are no hidden variables and it works uh, in a very simple, beautiful fashion. Uh, the exact quantum physics that is implemented in the US is slightly different from what uh, mankind believes in, but hidden variables are not even required to explain uh, the universe. So this is some, some bullshit, but, uh, but this has been achieved. I'll explain in a couple of uh, slides further down. Uh, the second thing is many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. People have been thinking about this to solve problems. One example of such a problem solving effort is something called quantum BOGO sort. It is a fancy name for a sorting algorithm uh, using quantum computing, many worlds interpretation. Many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics basically, you know, assumes that this this universe is actually multiple universes and you know you 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 spawn into you know many worlds etc you know at every point in time or whatever now the way quantum bogo sort works is that you know uh, you need to sort a list of uh, numbers given to you they are in some random order so what you do is you randomly shuffle the list and check if the list is sorted, if not destroy the universe, and then you repeat. So in the many worlds interpretation, since there are many universes, uh, there will be a universe left, which actually has the sorted list. Uh, but based on our, uh, you know, what we have discovered about the universe, this is a bullshit mind experiment. Uh, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics couldn't be further from truth and uh, now uh, to understand you know 
any interpretation of quantum mechanics is actually an attempt to explain how the mathematical theory of quantum mechanics might be implemented in this universe by uh, God himself or how it corresponds to reality. So, I mean, there is a theory of quantum mechanics and how it corresponds to, you know, reality or this universe. And that's how you, the explanation is the interpretation of quantum mechanics. So, many worlds is an interpretation of quantum mechanics that is, that, that we are telling you is, is bullshit. Now, if you see this table, there are more than a dozen interpretations of quantum mechanics. What we can tell you is that all of them are wrong. Now, uh, but that is a topic for discussion for another day. Now, in the world of computing, it is understood that, uh, you know, when you measure a quantum system, I mean, it collapses to, uh, you know, some state. Now, if we could measure a quantum system without collapsing uh, the quantum state, then we could solve a lot of problems which are even, you know, more complex than what quantum computers can solve. And the problems that quantum computers can solve, uh, you know, are called BQP which is bounded quantum uh, polynomial time problems. Uh, it's a fancy word of saying that quantum computers can solve these problems uh, easily, BQP. And, and above that, slightly more complex problems called uh, PDQP, product dynamical quantum polynomial time, can be solved if uh, you, know, you could measure a quantum circuit or a quantum system without collapsing the state. Now, if you could do this, then you could solve problems like, uh, you know, graph isomorphism, approximate shortest vector, which is uh, used in a lot of cryptography. Uh, now, uh, statistical zero knowledge uh, hard problems. These are, uh, now you could also, uh, you might have heard of Grover's search. You, it takes uh, square root, you know, time to search an uh, uh, unstructured list. But if you could do non-collapsing quantum measurements, then you could do an unstructured search in cube root or, uh, you know, one by fourth root of, uh, uh, of n. And uh, you might not be, you'll still not be able to solve NP hard problems using this kind of a quantum computer where you can make non-collapsing quantum measurements, but you will be slightly better than the regular quantum computers. Now, obviously, in the physical world in which we live in, uh, you can't, uh, you know, measure without collapsing the state. Uh, but Automatsky implements quantum physics in its quantum computers from scratch and hence is capable of, uh, you know, making measurements, repeated measurements uh, without collapsing the state. And that is why we achieved this in 1993s, etc. And we can solve PDQP problems, uh, for example, isomorphism, graph isomorphism, uh, approximate shortest vector, statistical zero knowledge, etc. in polynomial time. So this has been achieved. The next idea is to build a time travel computer. I mean, it is not a quantum computer exactly, but basically what you're doing is, suppose you have to solve a problem and to solve that problem, you have to try out, you know, let's say 1 billion, you know, combinations, like, like opening a lock or something, right? So you try one combination. If it doesn't work, you go back in time. You come back to the current day and you try another combination. If it doesn't work, Go back in time 10 minutes ago and then come back to the current state. Try another combination. Eventually, you'll solve it. Now, based on our uh, you know, discoveries of the universe, uh, just because you can make, you can put a negative number in any formula, that doesn't mean that uh, time is an axis and uh, you can go back in time. 
time travel as a concept uh, you know in in our in, in at least in the physical universe in which we live in is bullshit so time travel computers are not possible and there is a lot of theory and arguments uh, behind it but again this is a topic for discussion for another day but uh, like we said this approach has been abandoned we are not thinking about this because time travel is not possible time dilation is possible but time travel you know into the past is not possible so let me clarify that okay so that uh, now another you know uh, you know uh, extremely powerful way of solving computational problems is something called a non deterministic turing machine now basically i mean uh, if you have a calculation which is deterministic at every step you calculate the next step and then the next step next step like on a calculator it is uh, you know deterministic that is basically it, it it's a deterministic turing machine and uh, in a non deterministic turing machine the current state doesn't imply the next state and there could be many next states so it is like a tree structure and you will eventually find the solution and uh, this is the this is this is the basis of you know all the exponential problems the np problems that we are try, that we try to solve so you know non deterministic turing machines are a theoretical concept they are actually mind experiments uh, usually conducted to understand the limits of computations and it was so uh, until automatsky built one we built a non deterministic turing machine uh, implementation so uh, for the lack of a better name let's call it a non deterministic turing machine or a non deterministic computer in in uh, late uh, 90s and uh, it worked pretty well uh, the thing is that uh, we had difficulty getting the most accurate answers so it was great at very close very close uh, you know uh, answers to very close to the perfect solution but uh, getting the perfect solution was was difficult this way but yet this was achieved long time back quantum field theory building a computer based on quantum field theory is also something that a lot of uh, researchers and academics are exploring now the basic idea behind quantum field theory is that it 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 marries all these quantum theories to to explain particles as excitations in underlying fields so this entire universe quantum field theory says is just a lot of fields like fields like a magnetic field or an electric field right electromagnetic field or a or a gravitational field or or whatever force field so there are these fields in this universe and uh, whenever an excitation happens a particle appears and this excitation you know interacts with other excitations and that is you know uh, how they explain quantum you know mechanics and other theories now there are two theories at the heart of quantum field theory uh, one is quantum electrodynamic which is the electroweak theory basically electromagnetism or the weak nuclear force right that is explained by quantum electrodynamics and quantum chromodynamics basically deals with strong nuclear force uh, you know uh, transmitted by gluons and and uh, that is another thing that you know in in quantum mechanics we have found uh, you know things that you know are exchanged uh, to create the effect of a force so uh, those are the kind of you know explanations that quantum field theory gives and uh, the standard model you know rejoiced in 2012 when they claimed the discovery of uh, the higgs boson the higgs boson is basically you know uh, something that creates a drag when these particles or excite excitements you know excitations uh, you know travel through the quantum field and this drag is basically the mass mass prevents you from moving faster right so it's a drag it, it's like friction it's a drag 
and uh, that that is what was attributed to the Higgs boson. Now, uh, the only thing that, like I said, you know, the quantum gravity, the quantum field theory of gravity is the ultimate quest of mankind and, and physicists all over the world. Uh, the problem is that gravity has no particles attached to it and uh, 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 it has been explained by Einstein's general theory of rel relativity as the deforming of, you know, space-time. You know, the space-time bends and, and that is explained as gravity. Now, uh, there are no particles attributed to it and, and hence in the absence of particles, it cannot be represented as an excitation in the quantum field. And but whatever be it, quantum field theory and, and computational you know efforts or com computers built on quantum field theory can be perfectly simulated by a quantum computer that already exists at Automaski, and uh, they would provide uh, absolutely no additional benefits beyond the quantum computers that we already have, and hence this this has been abandoned uh, at Automaski. Now, this is the standard model of elementary particles. All is not hunky and glory in the standard model. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, energies and masses that are out of place in various experiments, which threaten the, uh, you know, uh, uh, which show that this standard model is wrong. Until the point, uh, you know, scientists get together and acknowledge that it is wrong, uh, you know, it, it is still accepted by the majority as uh, the best possible explanation, you know, outside Automaski of, of the universe. Now, a couple of more things are wrong. First, first of all, uh, in, in, in science, we believe that perpetual motion is not possible, but perpetual motion has been proven. Uh, these things are called time crystals which uh, you just need one example to disprove, you know, the theory. And uh, time crystals prove that uh, perpetual motion is possible, at least in the world of quantum physics. And uh, the second thing is super luminous, which is basically the claim that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. Uh, but Einstein was very uncomfortable with the idea of spooky action at a distance or uh, these are the words he used to uh, describe you know quantum teleportation etc and that is instantaneous instantaneous in comparison to the speed of light you know way 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 more instantaneous and hence super luminous so you know our understanding of sorry not our the mankind's understanding of the universe outside automaski is is uh, you know uh, needs improvement now another approach which is quite popular is analog computing which could find a lot of applications uh, in the near future now uh, analog uh, digital analog are, are what they mean when we say you know them and, and they mean exactly i mean them in the same way uh, what people mean when they say analog and digital. Now, analog basically means a continuous signal and there are a lot of, uh, you know, application areas like audio, video processing, compression, speech recognition, uh, natural language analysis, robot dynamics, machine vision, neural networks, etc. These applications require speed, not accuracy. And uh, analog uh, computing, remember the non-deterministic computer also gave very close to perfect solutions and analog computing can also give you very close to perfect solutions, but not as accurate as discrete or digital solutions, but it can do it really fast. And uh, when you have a robot moving, what you're worried about is the energy required to compute something and the speed at which you can compute it. Not ex You're not exactly bothered about getting the most perfect solution. You know, as, as long as you know, you know, you're almost in the right direction and you're parking your car, within the acceptable bounds of whatever and you are good enough so analog computing has a bright future and uh, it is one of the you know things that we are thinking about continuously experimenting learning about the theory and and the applications 
quantum gravity computer now this is something that will definitely definitely form a large part of the future of mankind uh, the power of quantum gravity computers or even even trying to understand how powerful a quantum gravity computer could possibly be is one of the deepest problems in physics because quantum gravity uh, uh, gravity has not been incorporated into the you know the quantum physics world uh, so but it is generally believed that uh, quantum gravity computers might the word is might be supremely powerful defying defying all kinds of logic of cause and effect to give instantaneous answers and uh, people outside automaski also believe that building a quantum gravity computer in the process will give you uh, a lot of knowledge about ex how exactly this universe works but at automaski we already know that so now uh, how does a what is involved in a in building a quantum gravity computer the one that we are building at automaski or or the, or the one we have almost built at automaski or you know uh, other people are thinking about building is basically that you have to combine a quantum computer or a quantum circuit with something called causaloid formalism or indefinite causality or indefinite causal structure basically you know uh, you have to remove the sequence or the time you know evolution or uh, the cause and effect relationship that exists uh, to to create a quantum gravity computer now a reasonable point in uh, now the thing about quantum gravity is that it is it is very close to information theories i mean very strangely enough you know quantum gravity is basically uh, largely involved with the, you know theories of indefinite causal structure and anything that evolves in time uh, cannot accommodate an indefinite causal structure because the cause and effect the cause will precede the effect in time and and strictly precede the effect in time so the causal structure is definite okay so uh, you have to you know avoid or overcome the causality the cause effect uh, you know uh, and the time based evolution etc or the strict order or sequence of evolution now causaloid formalism can be generally regarded as uh, a probability theory for theories with uh, indefinite causal structure and uh, quantum gravity computer something we built a couple of years ago we are not so we are not really sure you know if we built it correctly or or how to you know solve real world problems with it. it it's it's very easy to say that you remove causality i mean we, there are a lot of ways you could remove causality and there are theories around it uh, but you know it's like you know some alien species watching you know like us watching some alien you know tv broadcast and building something the way they explained it but we are not even sure how to make it work as in use it now another exciting area where uh, you know the computing could progress is uh, you know we could solve a lot more problems is something called non linear quantum mechanics now it might not be very evident in the beginning but uh, if you think about it quantum mechanics is basically linear and uh, if you look at a quantum circuit it is basically linear and, and there are unitary gates etc now uh, it has been theoretically proven that if you could in introduce even the slightest of non linearity in in uh, in these quantum physics equations like the schrodinger's equation etc you could exploit it to solve np problems in polynomial time and uh, and what it would mean is that you would have to implement non unitary gates in a quantum circuit because the unitary properties of gate operations will not be you know uh, maintained now ideally this could never be possible in a physical quantum computer in in our physical world in which we live in but at automaski because automaski implements quantum physics in order uh, n or linear time 
and from scratch you know so automaski could make any changes to the uh, physics implemented already uh, the physics we implement is is uh, uh, the extended version of quantum mechanics that uh, you know most of the rest of the world you know understands uh, uh, not slightly but quite a bit extended now we could always go ahead and make it non linear uh, we are still trying to experiment with it trying to understand the theory and how see the problem is introducing the non linearity is way more trivial compared to understanding how to use it to solve np hard problems in polynomial time but uh, yeah so it exists and uh, been there done that now in the world of uh, you know computing dna rna computing is quite popular and uh, basically dna rna computing is uh, is a way of encoding your problem inside dna strands and letting them evolve and mutate and then decoding the result you know the uh, can be used to solve combinatorial problems or optimization problems etc now this approach has been abandoned at automaski and we are not focusing on it at all because at the core dna computing is all about parallelism a gpu has 10000 cores okay and uh, 10 trillion DNA molecules can be squeezed into a single cubic centimeter. So you could take these 10 trillion DNA molecules or strands or whatever and you could do 10 trillion calculations in parallel and you could solve combinatorial problems. It will definitely be better than solving combinatorial problems and 10,000 core GPUs. But to think of it, all these combinatorial problems the reason we are trying to solve them is because they require an exponential amount of effort and their complexity grows exponentially so even if you could have 10000 parallel processes instead of 10000 if you could have 10 trillion parallel processes in, in instead of 10000 uh, you could solve slightly bigger problems probably a couple of more variables but uh, in the end, you'll still be stuck because the complexity of exponential NP hard problems grows exponentially. And exponentially is will outgrow 10 trillion, you know, capacity of processing capacity uh, in, in no time and, and you know, pro increase in problem size. So this approach has been abandoned. Adiabatic quantum computing is something we explored very early on and Adiabatic quantum computing uh, is a universal method of quantum computation and the way it works is that you start in some easy to reach uh, you know ground state and uh, you know and then you uh, proceed very slowly so that the system remains in ground state and does not jump into higher energy states corrupting the solution you stay in the ground state and you grow you go from the initial state to the final state and your answer will be encoded in the final state which state which you can recover this sounds you know like perfect but the problem is that uh, the minimum energy gap uh, uh, the difference the distance between the lowest energy states and the one uh, the energy states above them are exponentially small as you increase the problem size and you go into you try solving real world problems so much so that the entire universe will come to an end in 15 or 20 or 30 billion years but you will still not be able to finish the adiabatic quantum computation to solve any uh, real world problem of any consequence so this approach has been abandoned and uh, now, one of the things that people, you know, are very excited about is something called reversible quantum compute, uh, reversible computing. Now, quantum computing is a type of reversible computing. Every step in quantum circuits can be reversed, but reversible computing is a larger, more generalized, uh, general concept. Now, we have achieved this, uh, you know. Uh, 
uh, half a decade back and uh, we say that if something can be computed in the forward direction, we can reverse it classically. And we also assert that one-way functions don't exist, cryptography cannot exist. Any cryptography, classical, traditional, uh, you know, quantum safe, quantum proof, anything can be broken at automatically. Now, uh, reversal people involved in reversible computing are are concerned with energy consumption and and so on and so forth, etc. But uh, our perspective is that of computation, and from where we stand, uh, been there, done that. Oracle machines is something that is very exotic. You know, let me explain. You know why it is so, because uh, an Oracle machine is basically used to study decision problems. I mean, do you have a solution or not, and so on. It is basically a Turing machine or a computer with a small black box called an Oracle, which you can query, and this Oracle can solve certain problems in a single operation. And this problem can be of any kind of complexity class. I mean, com complexity classes are various, various classifications of you know how complex are problems in in computer sciences. But uh, there are some problems which are called undecidable problems. You know, such as the halting problem. Even they can be solved by Oracle machines. The only problem is the Oracle machine will be able to solve an undecidable problem also. Uh, like a halting problem and it can tell you if a system will halt or not but it won't be able to tell you if it itself will halt or not for you for which you will require a higher order oracle machine which can then tell if this lower order oracle machine can uh, you know will stop or not but it that higher order oracle machine cannot say if it itself can stop or not and it will require in turn, an even higher order Oracle machine, etc. Now, that uh, so the the thing is that Automaski has only limited interest in theory. You know, uh, we are inventors and innovators. We build things, we make it work, and uh, beyond a certain point, it is very confusing as to how something like an Oracle machine will even work. You know, how, how can somebody implement an oracle like this, which can solve, you know, any problems, you know, in, in a single operation. And, and unless somebody can, so in an academic paper, you can assume there is an oracle and then build the rest of the theory and your algorithms, etc. But in, in real world, you have to actually build the oracle that can solve the problems and then build the computer around it. Uh, that will solve real world problems and and you can't avoid doing that so uh, now hypercomputing is something also that we are thinking about but we are not really sure you know how it is supposed to work now hypercomputing is something called super turing computation basically uh, our traditional laptops etc are supposed to be based on the theory of turing machines and Computations that even Turing machines cannot do, you know, are super Turing computations. Now, uh, there is something called a Church Turing thesis, etc., but I'll not go into that. But basically, you know, uh, hypercomputation involves super Turing computations. And uh, now, the human brain is considered by many to be super Turing. I mean, it. It can solve problems that, you know, uh, our, uh, our laptops cannot solve and with way more, way lesser energy consumption, etc. in milliwatts. Now, uh, while this sounds, uh, you know, exciting that we can solve halting problem and uh, piano arithmetic, etc. But uh, still not sure how this you know, neurologically inspired, biologically inspired, you know, the, the, the human brain inspired. That is what, in a sense, they are, the, the people be behind such a research are trying to say, the, the biological brain, neurological brain, human brain inspired, you know, super Turing, hyper computing uh, computer is going to work. 
Now, there is something that is very exciting going on in the world of AI, something called online machine learning. Now, basically, what you call as AI is basically deep learning. So, uh, deep learning or, or basically machine learning. Uh, now, uh, machine learning so far, uh, you know, proceeds in batches. You have some data and you train on it and then you have a model. But uh, online machine learning basic, basically uh, is something where the you get, a, you get data in a sequence and you keep updating the, the model, you know, uh, with, with each data. And uh, this is called online machine learning. This is intriguing because uh, this is related to super Turing and hypercomputing in the way, you know, we draw parallels with the human brain where it continuously looks at n newer and newer data and, and keeps working. Another related term is lifelong machine learning, which is of interest to us and uh, probably is going to form a major part of uh, the near future of computing. Now, lifelong machine learning is basically machine learning algorithms or models that uh, keep working till infinity or, or, or lifelong. And the way they work is that they, they keep uh, encountering more and more data and they keep learning and unlearning, you know, uh, things. They acquire more, uh, more knowledge and they evolve their model continuously. So this is lifelong machine learning. Now, another thing that, you know, we are looking at is quantum time crystals. Now, they were theorized somewhere in, in 2012, but uh, confirmed by physicists only in 2016 when it created, uh, you know, an uh, explosive interest around, you know, uh, you know, things that can move without, you know, energy. Now, uh, a crystal, as you know, is basically something like a diamond or, or a, you know, or, or a crystal. Uh, I have no better way of explaining it, but it, it's a 3D structure in 3D space. I mean, uh, and a crystal stays intact and doesn't move. But uh, time crystals exist in 4D space while they are, inside a 3D crystal, they are continuously moving in time, in patterns that are repeated over time without absolutely any external source of energy. Now, while this is exciting for theoretical reasons that, you know, perpetual machines can exist, etc., and that our theories of physics and science are wrong, uh, even though nobody would acknowledge it publicly, and they would hope that uh, nobody brings up this topic, you know, in debates. But uh, recently, scientists created a two-level uh, system with two time crystals. Now, whenever there is, I mean, the entire, you know, uh, requirement for building a quantum computer is to have a two-level, you know, two-energy level quantum system. As long as you have two energy level quantum system, you can build a quantum computer around it. And recently, scientists could create a two-level system with quantum time crystals. And now it is conjectured that, uh, 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 you know, we can use them to build quantum computers, which will have certain attributes and will function, you know, uh, you know, better. So, now another area of interest is probabilistic uh, computing or probabilistic inference. Uh, there is something called uh, probabilistic bits, p-bits. They are also called as, you know, a poor man's qubit. If you see the circuit on the left, that is, uh, you know, uh, eight p-bits in, in action. And uh, they can solve, uh, you know, problems that we are, some of the problems we are trying to solve with quantum computers. But probabilistic computing is, is a larger, you know, concept and probabilistic inference, if you look at the diagram on the right, uh, calculations proceed from parameters to output, but probabilistic programming and inference goes from observations back to the internal, para figuring out the internal parameters of your model, which is kind of reversible computing and 
is very exciting because there are tremendous possibilities of solving a lot of problems you know in computing this way now there are other approaches i'm not going to read out all of them you can you can pause the video and and read them uh, spatial computing reaction diffusion reservoir computing amorphous field computing optical computing relativistic computing algebraic turing machine computation infinite time computation i mean let us compute till the end of the universe and get a solution uh, whatever i mean it's a great thought experiment but uh, i don't think we're going to wait till the end of the universe for solutions anyway so emergent computers non turing computation or super turing computation ternary state uh, you know computing chips chaos stochastic computing fluidics etc now uh, we are not very actively looking at them but we are conscious of them and we are uh, eager to read about such approaches and learn more now with that i think you know i have already told you that automasky built the world's most powerful and perfect quantum computers decades ago now in the earlier presentations we tried to explain to people when they have questioned us you know the skeptics you know uh, they they have said that we make quantum simulators which we have denied we have tried explaining to them that quantum simulators work on discrete mathematics and and basically combinatorial methods and cannot do more than you know 20 30 40 50 qubits even on supercomputers and even with approximate you know quantum simulators with uh, using tensor networks someone cannot do more than 1000 qubits but we have told people and we have demonstrated in action millions and billions of qubits and gates now the way we explain this is this uh, what our quantum computer is based on is extended quantum physics the extended version of things that you understand and we since we know that the universe is a simulation and a linear order simulation and we we understood the underlying fundamental algorithms of the universe way decades ago we can implement quantum physics from scratch and then built a you know uh uh hamiltonian evolution and you know bill gates and you know i would to perfection but let me try in this presentation to explain what we have in another way so you know in 1980s people created this theory about a quantum turing machine or the most perfect quantum computer and later you know people tried making physical quantum computers like physically with with supercomputing uh, superconducting electrons etc ion traps or or whatever and uh, they could never get close to a working quantum computer or a useful quantum computer which is not a toy now but but the idea of the quantum turing machine is is understood perfectly well you know so if i give you a black box and you give it any input you could give not to the quantum computers outside automasky but to the most perfect quantum computer in the world that uh, of a quantum turing machine you could give the inputs to a quantum turing machine and you get the outputs from a quantum turing machine and the black box gives you the same output with infinite precision infinite coherence and billions of qubits and gates capacity and then and and that to billions of gates only because trillions is actually it takes a lot of time to compute no, not that we cannot do trillions i mean if you had 15 20 days we could probably do trillions of you know qubits also now the thing is this if you got all the exact answers from the most perfect quantum computer in the world from the quantum turing machine on the same inputs what would you say is inside the black box which automatically put 
what would you say is inside the black box that Automatsky put? You would say that the black box contains the most powerful, perfect quantum computer in the world. There is no other explanation. Now, a, a, a slide about P is going to NP and how we achieved, you know, uh, uh, what we did. Now, if you think of the unique, unique games conjecture and the approximation theorems, uh, it, is, it is known that there are two types of problems. Problems that cannot be approximated to any degree and problems that cannot be approximated to the perfect solution. Now, max E3 lin2 cannot be approximated to any degree. Max SN, SNMP hard problems like metric TSP, max sad, max cut do not have a polynomial time approximation to a perfect solution unless P is equal to NP. And similarly, maximal click cannot be approximated within a factor of N by, you know, uh, uh, something epsilon uh, unless P is equal to NP. So, at Automaski, one of the ways in which we prove that P is equal to NP we are, though we are not interested in proofs that much, we are interested in implementations we can use to solve real world problems and which is our, has always been our focus and which we have already achieved. But for the sake of argument and proof, uh, we would say that we have been able to approximate problems to a perfect solution in polynomial, you know, complexity, sp uh, space time approximation uh, methods. And that is why we say that P is equal to NP. That is one of the reasons. Besides that, we have uh, working solvers that can solve any NP problem, uh, you know, in polynomial time. Now, I would like to reach out to all of you. you know, while we have mentioned a lot of things and we've described what the future of mankind would hold for us, uh, where are we going to go? It is going to be one of these things or more, one or more of these things that I have mentioned in this presentation. But of immediate interest is our quantum gravity computer and causalite formalism, nonlinear quantum mechanics and piano mathematics. If you can help us understand the theory behind such, you know, uh, concepts and how such concepts can be used to solve real world problems, we are willing to build everything on our own at our own cost and we will give you limited access to try it out and see how it works and the fruits of your labor or you know the effort you put in explaining to us and that uh, we have achieved the results and in return we will define the next millennium, millennium of mankind for the success and prosperity of the entire human race so we are reaching out to you Help us help mankind. Now, you take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill and you stay in wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is a truth, nothing more. Thank you.